Okay. Not underline. Italics. Two. Solve for y. Does that look like a hard set of instructions? Yeah. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Very good answer. Not yet. Um, issues. We'll start an issues category here. One. Not always possible. Two. When possible, does not always lead to a function. Okay? When possible, does not always lead to a function. All right, now I'm going to start doing examples, which will hopefully show this. Well, no, I'm going to do it intentionally do something that will screw up. Well, can we do something that works? Yes, we'll, just, we'll start with something that works. Okay, here's probably the simplest one that works that is not just a line. Okay? If you start with y equals x cubed, what should my first step be? x equals y, x equals y cubed. Step one, x equals y cubed. Now, to solve that for y, what do I do? How do I get rid of a cube root exponent? Square root is the right it, process, cube root and you cube root it. Okay? So you got to cube root both sides. So I'm going to... That's like a raised three over the square root Yes, it's a raised three over the radical. You could also use it by raising it to the one-third power. But I think this is a more familiar one, so we'll stick with this one. And then that's going to equal... But instead of x down in here... What we're raising is y cubed. Okay, now just like squaring something that's square rooting something that's squared, what do you think happens when something cubed is cube rooted? It's y. It all goes bye bye. It equals y, it cancels out. So I'm left with y equals cube root of x. Cube root of x. Okay? Now this works out, this is a nice example for this reason. This reason, which my computer will eventually get around to showing me. Okay, y equals x cubed. All right, y equals x cubed looks something like this, right? Now, is this a function? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I have y by itself. That's one of my first hints. It passes, passes the vertical line test. Beautiful, Layla, you remember? Passes the vertical line test everywhere. That's important. Now, when you create a function, hurry back, Jesse, you'll be missed. Um, when you invert a function, okay, the actual graph you get, you can always invert a graph. You can invert anything. All right, the question is, do you get a function when you're done? If I inverse this one, here's what's going to happen. When you switch the x and y, it's going to rotate at 90 degrees and then flip it around the x-axis. That's going to be the result. All right. Um, because of that, you can check in advance to see if you're going to get a function. If the original function, this pass, this is a function because it passes the vertical line test, right? Okay. If I'm going to rotate this thing and flip it, its inverse will have to pass a vertical line test as well. I think I went over this last year, but so you can figure this out and remember it. What test can I apply to this to see if its inverse will be a function? A horizontal line test. If this passes a horizontal line test everywhere we can imagine, then its inverse will be, then will pass a vertical line test. Then its inverse is going to be a function, exactly how I wanted it said, Dean. Now this thing won't do radical, so I have to use, I got to use the one third notation, good. Boom. There's my two graphs. Um, in red, we have the one-third. Pardon? We can make a flower. No, you can make a propeller. You can make a propeller. Okay, propeller, flower. Wait till we get the polar coordinates. Okay, so these are inverses of each other. There's one other quality of these that I want to talk about. and I have to put another graph in. Here we go. What line did I just oh, put in there? Oh, this is when I said it looked like a leaf last year. Yeah. 
Pardon? 1 over 1. 1 over 1 is the slope of the line I put in there. What is the equation of the line I just put y in? Y equals S. Some of you are literate. Um, it's on the board. Okay. When you graph the line Y equals X, the original function and its reflection, okay, I just gave away the word. The original function and its inverse reflection. will be reflections of each other. Very good to be able to um, around the line Y equals X. Okay, can you guys see that if Y equals X were like, was like a mirror, these would reflect each other, right, right each other? Right. Okay, anyone having trouble seeing that? No. Uh, what happens if you had, is it possible, you know, like a mirror, if you have a mirror here and a mirror here, they bounce off each other from the you get yeah. down a graph. Let me think about that. If you have a reflection on one side and a reflection on the other side. I could fake it, but I don't think I could get the graph to do that. A straight no one would have trouble with it. Uh, sorry to hear that because actually my favorite thing about having this projector not on the ceiling is when people are having trouble seeing reflections, I just do that. So is it now even easier to see it's a reflection? No. Yeah, put it on the ceiling. Yeah, put on the ceiling now. But yeah, features with ceiling mounted projectors can't do that. Um, okay. So that's probably the simplest non-line function and its inverse that I can demonstrate. Let me put this graph into your notes and let me, oh my god, I've included the equations in it. No, it didn't. That's the one from <laughs> above. I was so getting my hopes up. Okay, let me really quickly just put these in. Okay, blue, y equals x, red, this is y equals cube root of x, I don't have a purple, I have a purple highlighter, I'm not going to write in it, so in black, y equals x cubed. Probably the simplest example you're going to see. Okay, simplest example of when things go wrong. Is y equals x squared. y equals x squared, okay. Perfectly said, Dean. Perfectly said. Let's take a look at it. Dean's already picturing the parabola. Y equals x squared. It is a function. It passes a vertical line test. It fails a horizontal line test. That means when I invert it, when I go to my first step here, x equals y squared, I get something. You can always invert a graph, and you get a, you get a new graph, but this is not a function. This fails the vertical line test, x equals y squared, for everywhere it exists except for zero. It looks very pretty. You have the one pedal there, you have the larger effect, it's very nice. But it um, totally fails, you don't get a function. And as long as we're talking about functions, that's a problem. Um, negative numbers were controversial when Rene Descartes came up with this. So let's... Uh, well, I'm going to tell you in a second why I'm saying that. First, I switch these. What would you do to um, solve this now? Um, Get y by itself. Square root both sides. I would square root both sides. Y well, that's the, here's where it gets a little bit tricky. It's something that, honestly, math teachers struggle with how to teach, right? It's one of those things you, we sometimes tell you what to do and sometimes not. Um, so basically, I'm getting y equals, what do we sometimes tell you to do with square roots? We tell you to do it sometimes, we don't tell you to do it other times. Pardon? But it was an exponent, sometimes right to the one half. Simplify, but what else? We tell you to worry about something sometimes and not worry about it other times. Negatives. Negatives, excellent. Well, like if I say what's the square root of 4, what do I expect to hear? 2. 2, but what's another answer? Negative 2. And sometimes we say you have to worry about it, so sometimes we say no. So you have to put the positive no. and negative yeah. in front of it? Yeah, so technically, when you solve this, you've got to take into account that y equals plus or minus root x. So because of that possibility, if I just graph, what do you think will happen if I change this one to y equals x to the 1 half? It'll be, be reflected. Or not reflect, it'll be... What do I get? Inverse. Oh, weird. Well, just forget about the inverse for a second. What is, what is this graph? It'll be like the solid chain 